I'm very happy to chair this uh, Logistics Summit uh, 2015 to make, first of all, policymakers aware of the importance of logistics in Europe, where we want to stress the e-commerce as it's the, the future for Europe on the one hand side and the improvement of the infrastructure on the other hand side. Close cooperation between the European Commission and the organizations such as the Alliance for European Logistics is essential in order to improve EU transport policy. I wish to reassure you that your voice will not go unheard during this mandate of this Commission. We are ready and committed to work with you for the years to come, knowing that your sector is crucial for the competitiveness of the European economy. The vectors of change that we have to get right is, is scale, choice, trust. And, if we, and, and getting those right uh, will determine uh, the regulation that we need. The top three of main barriers is uh, VAT and of course legal issues, but um, also logistics. So 44% of our members actually say that um, they experience difficulties in terms of transportation and logistics uh, when doing their businesses cross-border. We need to make it easier to trade across uh, what is now 28 com countries, 500 million consumers. We need to build, bring down the barriers to trade. This is meant to cut costs for consumers and make it easier to do business. E-commerce has grown. It's in our natural interest as a logistics company to become better as fast as possible. Regulation doesn't help and regulation has never been proven a good driver for innovation. It limits innovation because you can't and never anticipate through regulation what the next innovation will be. Where does innovation come in in this e-commerce world that you see into the future that people need to be aware of and that perhaps uh, some of the open market or single market ideas and regulations should be aware of? Uh, from an EU perspective, uh, could be quite interesting would be around uh, sustainability. You know, there's a uh, if you look at the efficiencies that technology can drive within the supply chains, within logistics, uh, it can be quite substantial. The key thing here, I think, is that the shipping lines are driving down their own costs by deploying bigger ships, and by and large the cargo owners are benefit benefiting from that because those lower costs get passed through to the cargo owners. So those costs are going down, but it's generating higher costs for the rest of the supply chain. So shipping line costs, great, going down. But the rest of the supply chain is feeling the pain from that and feeling higher cost, higher investment requirements. Europe has world-class ports that continue to attract investment. Europe also has a policy environment that provides stability and certainty where things work well. Therefore, with the right kind of investment, we are confident that Europe's ports will adapt positively to the changing environment and remain efficient and competitive. We uh, strongly believe that uh, infrastructure should be better interconnected across modes and, in, and should be fully interoperable across all the EU. How can we bridge the divide? I mean, from, from our point of view, the divide can be bridged uh, basically in two ways. We can try to deal with a certain number of regulatory obstacles to try to improve the overall climate for investment. The other aspect would be to, to have a much more determined uh, direction on uh, providing the technical help, the expertise, uh, to the project promoters, to the member states. We are council and, uh, and uh, parliament coming from different places. We are in favor of the same thing. We want the Juncker plan. We want really uh, investment, massive investment on growth and, and jobs.